but he called me today. His mom passed several years ago. He goes, you know, she was, she was very anxious. She was, I mean, all over him about a lot of things and really challenged to allow him to grow up. And he said, you know, I didn't think I needed my mom until recently. I have daughters. I have all these parts of my life that now I feel like I'm missing a part of her that even though it wasn't, it wasn't very healthy, I'd love to be able to share it with her. I'd love to be able to talk to her. And so I, you know, if, when we see the imperfection, but we, we understand it, and we also understand that the parents do the best job they can do. Like they're reacting to how they were raised. They're breaking down. It's generational a lot of times. And so the more we heal ourselves, no matter when we do it, I would imagine the better we're helping the next generation to heal that next generation. I mean, that's, that's how I at least envision it. I completely agree with this. And I honestly believe that a part of our attachment style healing is healing the relationships with our parents. So our grievances, the things where we were like, oh, the things we haven't forgiven or the things that we're holding on close to our heart and resenting for, I believe it is powerful personal growth work and almost spiritual work to sit down and be like, let me take a different look. Let me look at this from an adult perspective. Let me look at what I can understand about my parents. I spend a lot of time in, in some of our programs taking people through, um, but we have a course called uh, learning to release resentment and truly forgive. Because I think we hear this like intellectualization of forgiveness a lot that says, oh, just forgive them. Just let it go. And it's like, yeah, but when you're actually not feeling that way, how do you arrive there? And I give people tools in this particular course. And one of the first things we do, and it was, people spend a lot of time doing this with their parents, is I get them to sit down and be like, okay, you had this experience as a child, but what were your parents' sponsoring intentions when they were doing this thing. So for example, if you had a really controlling parent, what were their sponsoring intentions? You think when you're a child, oh, they're just trying to control me, rude, I'm gonna rebel. And as an adult, you see, oh, they were trying to protect me and they were afraid of losing me and that was them doing the best that they could. And, and or if parents were really critical, you know, well, they were probably trying to prepare you to survive in the world because maybe they struggled financially and they didn't want that for you. And I find that looking at sponsoring intentions is so valuable. And then taking it a step deeper and being like, well, what was their childhood? What were their core wounds? What were their challenges and pain points that were unresolved as parents? And I think that we actually have this really important rite of passage that funnily enough, some people don't really go through until much later in life or ever, but we have a rite of passage to look at our parents, not as these individuals on a pedestal, but actually to just see them as other human beings doing the best that they could. And if somebody listening to this right now hasn't done that work yet, that is powerful work to do because we can release resentment, which is really just our own point, like poison and chains to the past. Um, and I find that whatever we haven't released from our parents will unfortunately always show up in our relationships as adults with our romantic partners. And so it's very powerful and important work on the topic of parents to actually look at some of these things that we're holding on to. And until we learn to actually forgive and, and, understand our parents are just human beings doing the best that they can these things will come out in different ways in our relationships as adults yeah it's it's um it's something that i i think i told myself so when i wrote my book um i'll say my first i haven't written the next one but i will so when i wrote the first book um you go through it's almost therapeutic i've never been to therapy i've never um I've had coaches, I've, you know, I've gone through lots of uh, personal development, um, but it's therapeutic. You go through all these, these things. And one of the first exercises I went through was I was asked a question, think of all the times you failed and what was the result of it? Right. And, and I started to go through all these failures and I, I forgot like so many things. Like I came home and asked my wife and she's like, Oh, did you remember this? Do you remember that? And not in a bad way, like in a, like, wow, you overcame this and you ever, and I, when I say failure, I don't mean failure. Like I did something and didn't win. I mean, like it was a challenge. It was, you know, severely uncomfortable or I lost a job or like, you know, those things. And, um, but going through that and looking at it, I, I found, you know, a couple of big, big things that were evident to the parents. Number one was, um, you know, I, I experienced a, uh, I witnessed a sexual trauma 
and a rape when I was uh, very young, uh, about three years old. It was extremely impactful to me. And, and the, um, and I had not really thought much about it until I started to go through this process. Really interesting, right? And the other thing I started to think about is how it impacted my family. How did it impact the way my parents raised me? How did it impact the way they raised my sister? How did it impact the way that they protected us? I was never allowed to spend the night at anyone's house. I was like, there was an enormously, um, completely altered state to our family that I've, you know, I never really thought about when my brother came 13 and a half years later, same parents, there was a peace that came over our family. It was almost like my parents got a redo. Um, my sister and I all united over this great new life and there was a change, but looking, so the first insight was this therapeutic process of going through something internally, seeing how it impacted my life. You know, the, the challenge was the challenge and the experience was the experience. I remembered a lot of the bad parts, but I also saw all the things that came about because of it. The second thing was um was this uh i would read my words back and when i would describe a story one particular story i'm walking with my father and he's riding his bike to work in his uniform he's blue collar super guy um he has his lunch pail it's a hundred and like three degrees outside we're walking from the babysitters he was riding his bike to and from work i don't know if it was one month one week a year i have no concept of it I just remember thinking, I was asking him all these questions, like, there's gotta be a better way. I'm probably like six years old, eight years old. And I'm like, what, what are we doing? Like, this has gotta, he's sweating, he looks uncomfortable and I'm trying to solve a problem. And when I read it the first time, I had this aggression about my tone. When I read it, when I did the second edit, I had released a little bit of this, um, this frustration and it was a relaxed, um, it was more relaxed. And by the third edit, he, he was almost heroic. And, and, and what's really interesting about that is it was me listening to how I was self-talking to myself, how I was telling myself a story. And, you know, you have kids, the last thing I'll say, and I'll pause because I know you have insight. The last thing I'll say is when you have children, you realize one really important, impactful thing. And that is there are two sides to every story. You know, there are two sides to every story. The way the child perceives it, like you said, with intent, if we look at the intent, what you don't know as a child is what your parents were doing behind the scenes or what they tried to do or how they, the, the result ended in a certain way. And so that process of writing was so valuable to me. And it was such a personal journey, even though it's probably one page in the book, like you have no idea as the reader what I was going through, but it was valuable to see my family, especially my father in a different light and to let go of some things, even, even though I had let go many, many years ago, I hadn't let go of the tone. Yeah. The tone had to change. If you like clips like this, I have a similar clip here. And if you want to watch the full video, click here.